Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Ramshackle, welcome to Friday School Internet Conversations! Is that like hashtag or is like semicolon? I don't know, I don't want to think about it now. Uh, but here we are again, another Friday. Uh, thanks again to our Patreons, uh, um, P uh, Scrupulous Atheist and uh, Brian McCoy, who are helping us out monthly. We are getting very, very close to the time where we have enough money that we can tell uh, the website to please uh, let us have the money. So I'm very excited about that. Uh, I really do believe that someday we'll get to that eventuality where where we are coming together and this thing becomes real and stupid. Real stupid. The uh, Our last episode of the show was very well received by the, uh, the audience it was intended for. And um, so we're going to continue on with this theme of sort of Friday school idea of uh, after the sermon, if you want to stick around and talk more about this, maybe if you have questions, uh, this is where to ask them, if you're like, what the fuck is going on with the idea of uh, uh, Israel, who is Israel, I can talk about uh, the last uh, video, because uh, I do want to point out that the Israelites are named after Israel, who is the name of the 12 tribes, so anyone before that is technically not an Israelite, they are Hebrews, I didn't quite get said as clearly as I could have. But thank you again for showing up for Friday School. Today we're going to talk about um, sort of Mormonism. We're going to talk about, because that's the uh, cult that I was raised in, uh, Christian cult, and it's going through a... It's, Mormonism is having a really hard transition right now, and uh, so we're going to talk about the state of Mormonism right now. Uh, it's going to, uh, there's a thing that we're going to talk about, and it's very long, we're going to read through it and talk about all the nuances of it, and it's going to take hours and hours and hours, it's what we're going to be doing for the next few weeks, perhaps months, so please do join us, and if you're not at all interested in the series, well cool, look at those other things you can click on over there, there they are, there's other things you can click on, and, uh, just d be entertained and, uh, informed by whatever it is you want to be entertained and informed by, because, uh, well, I mean... Mormonism is interesting for non-Mormons. For some people. Because it seems very mysterious. Like, isn't right. it talked about a lot? And I was raised They're Mormon. Hush -hush about this right. Story. I can so answer these questions for you. a lot of curiosity. So. Yeah. So bring your curiosity, and if you don't, then I understand. <laughs> you don't have to give a shit about any of this. Uh, but I do want to talk about it, uh, because um, th uh, these, these nuances are, are interesting to me, and... It helps me to go over this sort of homework here. These uh, these ideas helps me to keep these things sort of organized in my mind, and also I can uh, send people links to sort of ideas. If we go over a subject very heavily, uh, these links are being becoming very useful. Like uh, in that other conversation when I linked uh, my sermon about uh, or my encounter with a. Uh, and Hebrew Israelite, oh. I was able to link that as my point of contact, a very interesting point of contact, yeah. and so me talking your specifically, chapters of your book. right, very, very specific, so I don't have to repeat a lot of these things, and so, um, yeah, so that's what we're going to do right now, uh, stick around if you want to, and don't if you don't. I want to get going though, I'm so excited for this, like, yeah. I've been wanting to do this for two years, you know it's like that homework you're like, I'll get to eventually? Yes, 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 yes. Homework we'll eventually get to, yes. yes Friday, you're yeah, welcome just... to Friday school, the homework. The homework that you will eventually get to, and let me tell you that this is me eventually getting to it as well. Isn't that interesting? Oh. That because of the way that time works, and because of the way the YouTube works and recording and shit like that, that we actually happen to be in the uh, sort of same place doing the homework that uh, we didn't find appealing until exactly now. So uh, unless this has been assigned to you, in which case go talk to whoever assigned it to you, unless it's me. <laughs> and be like, what? Why are you assigning me this as homework? And this is, I'm supposed to come to this when I come to this. But if it's me, I'm telling you, this is this is what I want to talk to you about. Is the CS letter. So thank you for joining me at the CS letter. Don't mind the. This is nothing. <laughs> Don't mind. This. Welcome to Friday Friday School. Welcome to Let's Have Internet Conversations. <laughs> Took me 19 hours to do this. 19. <laughs> This is not hyperbole. <laughs> no, it is a hyperbole. Yes. It took it took it took a long time. It took embarrassing long. Yeah. That's why he's going. And the homework that I'm not going to get to is the homework of how the fuck do you use GIMP? What the fuck is going on here? <laughs> no, that's not coming anytime soon. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
So for those people who are not post-Mormon, or soon to be post-Mormon, let me explain to you what the CES letter is. CES stands for Church Education System, which is a group of people in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the Mormon Church, who are responsible for the, um, the sort of... Uh, um, Educational material. Y- yeah, the, there's... A little bit, a little, they're a little bit separate from them, I think, oh. because there are some people who are who are responsible for the like the the publishing things, but then there's this, like what's going on in institute and seminary, and these and these other things, these 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 not not the Sunday school, not <laughs> so I, it's already um, it's very. It's very complicated. They it's a very so old system. Many organizations. Yes, but the CES is the other people that teach the high school aged and college aged Mormons, and Mormons go to their church for in high school age, before school, or during school in Utah. They get a free period in Utah in high school where they can go off campus to a building right next to campus that is church owned Mm -hmm. that um, they're able to take an hour of class called Institute. I went to in Utah Mm -hmm. had the building in the campus. Like you just went outside to the back where you would normally go out to throw basketball. Yeah. We went out back and then there was the brick building that looked just like a church. Yeah. With seminary in there. Yeah. And that's very interesting who owned what land, how that relationship is. And I don't know the intricacies but, but in it california, is california we had to go before school started right so in california uh school started at like late 7 seven forty-five, seven fifty, 750 or something like that and uh your seminary started an hour before that because it was an hour well, used to yeah driving time too. Uh-huh. and you had to graduate from seminary to get a recommendation to go to byu which is uh-huh. the church run school which every mormon should want to go to, to yeah. should aspire. If you don't aspire to go to BYU, you really must explain yeah. yourself. My in, dad took us there on many vacations, and <coughs> yeah, I looked forward to yeah. going there. Yeah, I did not go to BYU. I went to a, a, a school near there, uh, UVSC, because I uh, I was n- not able to get... I did not go to seminary, personally. I could... Mm-hmm. Waking up early is the thing that I, I cannot do. And so, oh, I, man, I was so gun co for it. If I was, if I was in Utah though, when it was happening and it was happening during school, yeah. I would have been nuts. That's it would have been true. crazy, go nuts. Yeah. But I very much did. So I was torn. I very much did like seminary because uh, being in being because I liked the people that I went to church with. They were very mm-hmm. cool people. The the people my age, and it was all those people that we that we'd yeah, been growing up yeah. with, and hanging out with them every day yeah. for an hour in the morning when we were kind of groggy and waking up was uh, was was really fun. Uh, yeah, really fun. And uh, it turns out it was really sexy. The yeah. the idea is a really really fun, sexy, attractive it's idea. To flirt and yeah, to be with each other church, and right away from, away from our parents, and uh, it just the, it became a struggle yeah. between me and my mom about waking this thing up, and it just exploded. Yeah. And I think uh, I think I was the sort of one that that really wore my mom down on that one. And for the the two after me, I think that they were sort of self motivated, and mom didn't do it to them, and so yeah. uh, and so you know, good. It's good to be self motivated, mm-hmm. but. So, and then okay, so you're taught for those four years, and then also there's um, there's classes as well for college age people, and and so they those go to the college schools, right? yeah, yeah, it goes to goes to BYU, and then um, any any other thing. If you have a if you have a, a large enough Mormon population in in any school, there can be institute oh. classes because you just get someone to teach the classes. If you have six people and you just teach it once a once a day, whatever. So like. Wow. Yeah, so there's institutes. It's okay. not just in the in the Mormon majority schools that this is going on, and so those people that are teaching that are um, organized uh, in this thing called the CES, and um, and they are a group of people that go deeper into doctrine than we do in the Sunday meetings, which is very strange. That the deepest time you go into the doctrine is not during the general sort of. Um, religion in the in the in the chapels and stake centers but in these institute buildings and seminary buildings this is where the sort of more actual uh literal histories are being talked about well isn't that the most curious time of the adults new adult is 
high school and college years to start exploring. That is that is when we you feel like you're getting more in depth information. You're yeah. not gonna go off and look for more that, information on your own. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's they want to catch it. Right. Curiosity right. Time. So that when yeah. the curiosity is happening they get to uh, they get to guide it. Yeah. So it is uh, I mean you can call that nefarious but um but whatever. Well, they've been around for 200 years. It just kind of developed. Yes, these these processes how do collect. We keep our kids in. We love yeah. them. It's yeah. meant for. Yeah. Why are you derailing on this very? We're trying to stay to the subject. She's trying to move yes. us off onto these yes. side tangents. <laughs> again and again. We're already on like nine. <laughs> Jesus. All right. Cancel this. Let's start. Oh, oh, start over. Oh, speaking of that, um, why don't you take this time because this is Friday school and we've already prayed uh, to Flying Spaghetti Monster that his uh, holy noodly appendages will be here and, and warm. But I there has been a prayer said in the studio right. off camera because it's inappropriate to uh, it's inappropriate to uh, to broadcast such an intimate thing. And so why don't you take a moment here and pause the uh, pause here and. Uh, and uh, say any prayer that you would like to, so that uh, we can be sure that uh, the good and holy spirits or whatever uh, are here, that uh, the Holy Ghost can touch us, or that the flying spaghetti monster can uh, show us his warmth. So go ahead and pause that, and uh, and then come on back. I don't know what you're talking about. And thank you back to the cult of flying spaghetti monster. Uh, uh, and we're going to talk today about, uh, cause this, this, this discussion though, we're not pushing, uh, pastafarianism today. We're not going to be trying to convert you, but we are going to be, uh, we are the ones sponsoring this. We are the ones that have, have, uh, done the, the, uh, the homework and got the, uh, the things together to, to talk about this, that, um, we'll be doing the guided tour. And if you do want more of these, please do check out my channel. Um, to the live channel. I'm confused about who I'm talking about. I don't, I don't even know. There's either. so many people out there right now. I realized I was more talkative earlier because I was like, this is my show. It's like Twitch. Oh, it is. It and is. It I is. I was like, wait, no, it's not. We're doing a video. Right, right, right. So, so, so we, are, yeah. we, are, we are talking to a lot of different audiences. It's very <laughs> difficult to do. But it's not the hardest thing I've ever done for YouTube yeah. because the hardest thing I've ever done for YouTube was to edit a video about editing and that fucking, <laughs> that one, I don't think I could have done without the wonderful assistance of Mary Jane. <laughs> the wonderful mind expander. Yes, you went through time warp. I, I watched it. Yeah, it was beautiful. Go watch it. The link, the link you can find down below, but not if you're watching live. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, so here is the CES letter, and uh, what happened was uh, the way that I understand it is this: a man named Jeremy Runnels, who was a faithful Mormon, mm -hmm. uh. Uh, began to hear some ideas about the church and uh, was um, at that stage where you're interested in mm -hmm. finding out the reality of ideas and was investigating whether it was um, something false that was made by people who are antagonistic to Mormons, which we Mormons would call anti-Mormons, mm -hmm. or... Um, something that's true, whether it was a fab anti Mormon fabrication or a uh, real situation that uh, that should be incorporated into reality. And he came across more things started showing up as being true than he expected. And it started to, like we talked about the other day, it started to put weight on a shelf, and uh, it, it, it instead of he couldn't um, deal with how many issues he was having how often it came back. And so he wanted to talk about them and being like, if this is all true, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. um, and it's a very, it's a, and, and, and so he was having a hard time and he was talking to people in the, the CES group. He was involved with the, the teachers of the, the teachers. Oh, okay. That's the, the CES group teach the teachers of Institute how mm -hmm. to teach, mm -hmm. right? They teach them, this is how you do it, and this is the information, and here it is. And so they, he was asking, he was hanging out with them and having these issues and talking to someone that he knew, and that someone was, a, was one of the presidents of this in, um, organization, one of the very, very higher persons. Um, and uh, that person, from what I understand, said to him something to the effect of, Okay, I can see you have a lot of problems, and I don't really have time to talk about them now. Why don't you get them all down on paper and send it to me, and then I'll address it then. And so that sort of sparked Jeremy Runnels' sort of instigated 
getting it together, to organizing yeah, this. Right. And then he found that as he began to organize it, it became something that was much, much larger than he even expected when he began. Yeah. And, uh, and so this is the letter that, that came out of that, and uh, it turns out to be more of a, a, a very long essay. Yeah. And so this, this is going to take us a very long time to go through this because yeah. it's very detailed, um, and it, it is very ways. exhaustive. Yeah. yeah, it's very good. We'll be going. Yeah, we'll be we'll be we'll we we'll, we'll be going. We'll be traveling around a lot. Because I want to understand this in depth. Uh, that's one of the reasons, and uh, and because uh, um, getting the uh, a depth first search, a breadth first search, making sure an exhaustive search mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. is generally good, and talking about things that matter and things that don't matter, and all of these things is spark conversation, mm -hmm. and it's uh, it's very it's a very worthy journey. Uh, that we have put off until now, but uh, there's no reason further to because uh, yeah. it's interesting. It's yeah. interesting. So, and Jeremy Runnels is still uh, active in the post Mormon community. You can find him on uh, Reddit. He's uh, been very vocal about what happened to him as a result of going through this process, uh, and uh, he's very good at uh, explaining it himself. And uh, he's uh, do do go search him if you're at all interested uh, in this. Uh, because this is this isn't really going to be about him. It's going to be about all the um, all of the points, everything, everything, everything that's that I don't believe that I was taught that when I was a Mormon. Right, exactly. Is this is this an anti-Mormon lie, or is this really what happened? Right. And if this is really what happened, how can I continue to believe? Mm -hmm. How can I continue to believe if this is all true? Yeah. Is the sort of um, summary. So again. Thank you for showing up. Uh -huh. uh, buckle up uh -huh. for the next couple of months. It's end of July, so maybe August, September, we'll be doing the series. And then after that, we'll, who knows what we'll do for season two of Internet Diographies. I don't even remember what this is called. Conversations. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. So, and <laughs> um. Uh, so we Internet want. Podcast. So here's <laughs> a here's a double double trouble podcast. <laughs> All right, I don't know if this is formatted for this area. I don't think it is. So We're gonna have to work on this a little bit. Yeah. Oh no, it's good. No. Let me see what the next page looks like because that's an um, typical page. The non-typical. Oh, it's page. nothing. Actually, now that I look at it, there is nothing. <laughs> I I don't know. What I was thinking the church is true. Everybody. <laughs> Blink. Ah. Yeah, he no questions. Oh shit, no, no, no. The more I look, the the more oh, the more there is. Yeah, it's a heartbreak. Oh my gosh, deja vu. <laughs> so 138 pages. I'm not joking. I'm buckle up. This is this is going to be funnish. <laughs> because if it's not fun, you fucking fuck off. It's funny for me, yeah. All right. So yeah, I think this is fine. I think this is great because the four the four like of the it. thing up there is a good way to sort of reference it. Um, yeah, and this uh, because yeah, this process takes a very long time. This process took a very long time. Yeah. Um, it's surprising. Uh, it's surprising that it was like when you really look at it, it was like no three months. I sort of every day just just read and read and read and was like just had my mind blown and had emotional responses and dealt with that and sort of yeah. talked about it and then went and then stayed up all night and read it and so how long did that go on is like oh for for a period yeah uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah it's intense it's, and it's longer than you think and it's okay yeah and and yeah and we've all been there and don't um you're you're not as alone as it feels the the loneliness is a lie they were lying to you this is Jay Ruben Clark. Uh, this is Jay Ruben Clark. He was a he was a uh, an apostle. He was not a, not a prophet. So in the Mormon Church, they have the organization, and the very the very highest person in the organization is the prophet. Below him are two other guys, which are his counselors, and below them are twelve other guys, which are the apostles. All fifteen of them are technically the apostles, but there is sort of a, a power sort of um, difference. And modern day apostles like. Apostles with Jesus Christ. What does that? What do you mean? These they, yeah, there's they are similar as the Bible, New Testament apostles. No, there's not. There were <laughs> there were twelve apostles in the New Testament. There's fifteen of these but motherfuckers. Like, 
they call themselves modern day apostles. They they say that they're equivalent of people like mm-hmm. that they are modern day equivalents. So your point is, so they they call themselves the modern day equivalent of people like Paul and Peter and um, James and yes, uh, exactly. people like mm-hmm. Doubting Thomas. These are all apostles. Like all that's what these people were called. Mm-hmm. And these modern day people are saying that they are equivalent to them. Mm-hmm. And so it's kind of like saying. Um, wizard and meaning it and mm-hmm. meaning you know if you read the Lord of the Rings uh, Gandalf was a wizard and I've achieved wizard and mm-hmm. then you go okay so would you please blow the the smoke rings and they go well uh, we don't do that anymore and it's like what, what, what on earth are you talking about then mm-hmm. with wizard like what does that mean to you yeah. and how come so modern day apostles and so he was one of those and uh, every once in a while they w- they would say something that's incredibly um uh, prescient, uh, and the and generally the people who said ideas like this never, never got to the <laughs> top tier. Um, but he said, if we have the truth, it cannot be harmed by investigation, and if we have not the truth, it ought to be harmed. And that second statement is a very important statement because there's a counter statement in the and so all of these are all of these ideas and statements are things that ring in in the ears of Mormons. These are the these are the John 3.16s of Mormonism. These things are heard. Things like, as man once was, uh, or as God once was, man can become. Things like this are, are these uh, poems that we, uh, we teach each other in the meme-plex of Mormonism. Mm-hmm. Uh, meme-plex. Yeah, that's uh, uh, Richard, Dawk- Richard Dawkins. Uh, that's in his, uh, one oh, of his cool. ideas. Yeah, so these, these collections of memes. Mm-hmm. And, and that's what they are, and he is creator of one. And, and so the idea that it ought to be harmed is very important because the other, the, the alternative to this is the, the question that they can leave the church, but they can't leave it alone. Every Mormon, every Mormon will finish that statement for you. Mm-hmm. They can leave the church, but they can't, and they will finish the statement, leave it alone. And this is the reason, is because it ought to be harmed if it's false. It is true that it ought to be harmed. And the reason that I can't leave it alone is because it ought to be harmed. Yeah. And, uh, that is, that is, and that is the conclusion that we're going to come to in this book, is that this church ought to be harmed. Um, by its own admission, by its own judgment, uh, th- this is false. Yeah. Uh, and I and I am justified in my uh, uh, my combat. <clears throat> mm-hmm. So maybe he there's an intro. There's some uh, titles here. Originally started uh, 2013. I believe my sort of uh, my idea began around 2015. Um, uh, it was sort of I ramped into it. It's but it I really hit very hard in the summer of 2015, I believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, I believe that's correct. I can go look at the uh, things. Uh, it was it was before I a little bit before I started preaching, so you can go check it out. Uh, I talk about it a little bit then. It took about three months, the whole summer, to sort of transition, understand what it what I wanted. I attempted to sort of integrate mm-hmm. my new reality with the with, with my new um, understanding with the um, rigidity of the um, of my culture I was tried to integrate them until about December uh, maybe January and uh, and it's uh, it, I yeah and so that's my journey and so I came at during that time I became aware of this, uh, but sideways. And I've never, I've never read through it. I've referenced uh, a couple pages of this, but yes, generally, yeah. most of the things that this will bring up, um, I found out sequentially. Um, l- much like uh, Jeremy, is that that the more I research, the more things I found to research, and so um, I, 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 I had a similar journey. Uh, uh, I, I was not able, I found out about this idea after I had pretty I mean, much yeah, completed here. a lot of it. Yeah. So it wasn't, it wasn't formative in my, in my actual journey. It's Correct. not, a, it's not, a, it's not an important piece in my it journey. It's just more, oh. One of them, one of the pieces in my journey is, uh, um, sci- the Scientology movie. Uh, what's that one called? Um, uh, oh, going, uh, clear. going Clear. Yeah. yeah, the Going Clear one. 
the uh, that was that was very important. Uh, actually, watching Cosmos was really important. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and uh, because and the reason that the, that one was is because I felt the Holy Ghost during during this thing that was that was. Um, that's a lot of weight on your shelf is to be watching this cosmos idea and feel that feeling that mm -hmm. really has been outside identified as yeah, right and not just outside of it but kind of it's kind of cosmos is a little bit sharp in that it's saying religion is harmed yes so. anyone that tells you that this isn't what happened mm -hmm is a problem yes. that's kind of what yeah. they're saying uh yeah so that's my uh relationship to this uh to this uh thing and uh that's i believe the backstory of it let's see what what he does have to say he is going to introduce it uh thank you for responding to my grandfather's request name of ces director so that's the name of the the that's the uh the um ces director is who is the person that um at the time he sent it to that asked, why don't you put it all down? I'll get to it, you know, when I can. Thank you for responding to my grandfather's request to answer my concerns and questions and for offering me your offering your time with me. I appreciate it. I'm interested in your thoughts and answers. Have I been unable uh, to find official answers? Yeah, keep it down. This is going to be... <clears throat> As I have been unable to find official answers from the church for most of these issues. It is my hope that you're going to have better answers than many of those given by unofficial apologists such as Fair Mormon and the Neil A. Maxwell Institute, formerly Farms. And so these are these are groups of self-appointed apologists. These are not the groups that he's mentioned right there are not um, official uh, church groups uh, funded or run or, or organized by the by any of the Mormon mm -hmm. things, but they are Mormon people who have self-organized to uh, sort of deal with the cognitive mm -hmm. dissonance. When you find something, how do you deal with it? Mm -hmm. The church gives no answer. There must be an answer, and they, they come up with these other things. And generally, um, the uh, feeling that I had of these ideas when I was in the when I was a member, these groups was don't don't hang out with them. They're like the the fringe sort of they yeah. get into deep doctrines that are weird and a lot of them there was a feeling that a lot of them would were like oh it turned out he left and it's like what that's weird mm -hmm. and so if there was anything that was like felt dangerous like that was on the line of dangerous of like mm -hmm. there was a there was a danger in there of, of i don't know of like losing your faith of um seeing weird things right it's like yeah. It's like, conspiracy? yeah, it's like you're going to be, you're going to not be able to see what conspiracy is. Because yeah. there are some people, on, we would meet some people, especially one on the mission. I met one in New Zealand who had said that he moved to New Zealand because the apocalypse was coming. And it's like, what? And he's like, yeah. And, and then he started to explain it with the Doctrine and Covenants, which is a Mormon, which is a Mormon book. And so all of a sudden he was this Mormon that was so... Um, radical that he was he was too Mormon. It yeah, was the thing was yeah. that he had he was acting on these ideas. The Mormons called him fanatical, right? Mm -hmm. Because the, because uh, revelation is supposed to come through the pyramid from the top. The mm -hmm. prophet is supposed to come through that, and so this guy was kind of like Choosing to he was he was he was another peak in the pyramid, and it was very strange. But he was using Mormon um, scriptures. It was very very strange. And uh, that sort of the idea is it's dangerous. You might go there. You might become like crazy Mormon. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, instead just of... just the branchings off of like just Christianity did. You know, you got Lutheran and Baptist. Right. And, and there's lots of them. There's lots of them in Mormonism. Yeah. Like tons and tons of them. So, and, and many of them are like violent. Uh, exactly. Yeah. I'm just going to be straightforward and sharing my concerns. Obviously, I am a disaffected member who lost his testimony. So it's no secret which side I'm on at the moment. But I believe that when he was invited to start this, he was not so firmly. That's the thing is, is after you do it, you've got to sort of firmly make the decision of, no, yeah. I'm not waffling anymore. I'm past that point. Yeah. You have to start apologizing. Like, we have to start cleaning this up in order for it to be good. I can't ever get to the point where I can just be like, oh, yeah, that doesn't mean anything. It doesn't matter. Right. There has to be cleanup. 
Right. And if there's none of that, I guess I'm post-Mormon. Mm -hmm. I guess I'm on this side of this issue. Mm -hmm. Is these count as lies. I don't want to deal with liars. I don't want to follow the rules of liars, and you are seem to be lying. Yeah. And it's a big deal. Um, you ha attend every week. Mm -hmm. And so, as he's writing this, who knows how long it took him to write. Right. Every Sunday, he's got to also go to church. And the more he writes this, the more he's going to be like, oh, I'm not going. And any missed Sundays will bring your bishop. Yes. Asking, it has actual consequences. Why right. Why aren't you there? And right. he's like, well, I'm having these serious doubts. And then it just, the word spreads. Right. Right. And so, by the time he actually sends it, he's past the it's point. It's past the point. And right. It happens very quickly. Everybody knows. Right. Because gossipers. Right. It took me six months to know that I was not coming back. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All this information is a result of over a year, he says, of intense research and an absolute rabid obsession with Joseph Smith and church history. And that's that's what will do it. And so we'll, this is what it's about, is, is mostly church history. It's like, these are the things that have happened in the past years. Why? Mm -hmm. It's Yeah. With that said, I'd be pretty arrogant and ignorant to say that I have all the information that you don't have answers. Like you, I put my pants on one leg at a time and I see through a glass darkly. Which is a reference, which is a biblical reference. The pants one leg at a time is a colloquialism, uh, modern colloquialism, right? I think. I don't what know. What's that if, word you just used? Colloquialism. Uh -huh. Colloquialism. Uh, things like, uh, um, I can't think of any. It's, fuck you. Okay, fix. But then the other one is from the Bible. So one of them is sort of modern and, and the other one's the Bible. You may have new information and or a new perspective that I may not have had, have heard or considered before. This is why I'm genuinely interested in what your answers and thoughts are to these issues. And that is, that is one of the, that is, that's an important point. I, we're going to talk about every fucking paragraph probably. Yeah. Is that our, our concern is genuine. Like, to, I'm called, uh, as a pastafarian, I'm called a satirist as if that, as it's if that you? gets rid of my how yeah. genuine I am, right. right? And it's like I'm, but I'm genuinely satirical. It's like this is really genuine. When I when I'm when I'm talking to people and I'm asking them what they believe, it's it's genuine. And this uh, and and th like Anthony Magda Bosco's uh, questioning is also genuine. But there's sort of a duplicitous, it looks duplicitous from the outside because it's like you're not really asking them what they believe because they might convert you. You're asking them because you might deconvert them. But then he says, no, 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 they might convert me. And, and so that idea is genuine but hard to believe, right? Mm -hmm. And he's really good at it, I think. And uh, um, Jeremy Runnels, I think, is very good at it mm -hmm. in this. And, and it's, but it's true for post-Mormons. If they're talking to you about it, it's because they're interested. Because there's a whole group of post-Mormons that just let it go walk away from it, mm -hmm. never think of it again. It's just not part of their life. Yeah. It's just, I woke from a dream one day and I've never been dreaming again. And why would I think about, why do we dream, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But for some of us, it's genuine. It's, the, it's why the fuck do we dream, right? Mm -hmm. Why are we religious? Yeah. What do we get out of it? If we cut it out, what are we losing? Uh, mm -hmm. Can we get it any other way? Yeah. Um, is it valuable in, is it valuable for my uh, survival and mm -hmm. uh, for the, um, and, my family. And here's all the evidence of how it harmed me. Yeah, how did it harm me? How do I and protect? I see it again how do we make? People. How do we? Yeah. How do we get people out of it? All these things are genuinely uh, interesting. Yeah. Um, what do the people who are following it think? It, how many of the fifteen apostles are are true believers, and how many of them are New Order sort of? It's a good culture. It's the best culture. It might yeah. not be literally true, but we are but fascism is the way to go it's the only way we'll right. be safe as a people like believe in the believe they in the, the doctrine right the, who, who, it's yeah a great system right believe in belief is enough yeah. and this one is a really good one because yeah. it's the one it's ours right ours yeah. is the best so how many of them think that how many of them think the other ones how many of them how are like are right mm -hmm. just can't get out their like parents or their wife or their their whole That's lives, their, their livelihood, their actual literal job. Yes. So, yes. yeah. So, we're genuinely interested in this, and everyone's allowed to answer the with their true answers, and, mm -hmm. and it's interesting. It's interesting. I find this stuff to be interesting. I wish I didn't. <laughs> I wish I found uh, 
uh, computer game programming is so interesting that I just can't stop, and uh, all of a sudden there's just computer games coming out of my ass, but that's not it. What I've got is <laughs> pastafarian sermons. I just can't stop them. All I have is them coming out of my asses. I wish it was something else, but oh well. So, I've decided to put down in writing just about all the major concerns that I have. I went through my notes from the past, from my past year of research and compiled them together. It doesn't make sense for me to just lay down five concerns while also having 20 other concerns that legitimately challenge the truth claim of the LDS Church. That's a really important thing is um, when you're, there's the idea that when you're preaching to someone and you're trying to get them to become Mormon, there's really only one reason that they don't. And, and that is because they don't have faith in that Joseph Smith was a prophet. Mm -hmm. And all you got to do is get them to have faith. And you can do that in a number of ways. But that's the pivotal idea is um, if Joseph Smith's a prophet, the book he wrote is true. Jesus talked to him. This is the way to go. This is the way to get to heaven. Let's follow him. Because mm -hmm. that's the argument of Mormonism is Joseph Smith uh, had a special experience. It changed the world. And if it's true, we have to follow it. And if it's not, we don't. And so there's 20 arguments, 25 arguments that it's not true, but there's only one argument that it's true. And that argument is pray about it. How do you feel? Yeah. That's the argument. It's true. Yeah. But there's so many, there's the argument against it is so multifaceted that they want to get, they want it to be these two ideas competing and it's not. It's your one argument against our 25. And that's what we're talking about. Is you don't care that there's 25. And they say yes, because there's one reason to believe. A quick description of my background might help you understand where I'm coming from. I was a very active and fully believing member my entire life up until around the summer of 2012. My grandfather already outlined my life events to you in his email. So I think... You get the idea that I accepted and embraced Mormonism. So uh, there was a relative involved in the in okay. the chain of communication. Yeah. In, February, in February of uh, 2012, I was reading the news online when I came across the following article, Mormonism Besieged by the Modern Age. It was an article, where, uh, in the article was information about a question and answer meeting in the U Utah State University that LDS Church Historian and General Authority Elder Marlon K. Jensen gave in late 2011. So, General Authority means not just the 15 people that we've talked about, but another group of people, three other, or I don't know how many of there are there now, but there's these groups of 70, they call them. And I think all of the groups of 70 have less than 70 people in it. And then they're all called, and so, the, so there's, there's the general authorities are, are those people. The high, the, in this pyramid, there's sort of a line, mm -hmm. and everyone above this line is a general authority, and everyone below is not. Okay. And it's like, who's in there? And it's like, it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> so the 70 are in there. I believe that the first presidency is in there, but then there are different. Uh, the first bishopric, rather, is in there. And so there's these groups. Do your apostles usually get chosen from the, gen the 70? Generally, yes. Okay. That uh, you spend time, there is a hierarchy, you're a bishop, you're a stake president, you're a mission president, mm -hmm. you're second quorum of the 70, you're first quorum of the 70, you're an apostle, you're in the first presidency, you're the prophet. And so that's sort of, that's mm -hmm. sort of how it goes. Uh, that's the hierarchy of, uh, of uh, the callings in the mm -hmm. church. And so all of those selections very often select. Did you ever uh, dream of it or think it was possible to move up that chain? Um, I thought it was very probable, like a lot of Mormons, that I was going to be an apostle. Yeah, I thought I was going to be an apostle's wife. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's a very easy thing to think as a Mormon, uh -huh. is that I'm probably going to be an apostle then, right? Uh -huh. Because the, the, the way that they tell us, the, the the actual way that an apostle is selected is much different than the way that they tell us that it's selected. And yeah. so they say this, and you keep you think, well, I'm capable of that, and I'm that's likely, might be inevitable. Uh, so it's very easy to think, but it's very obviously difficult to become yeah. uh, a thing because... Um, There's so many women. And it's so nepotistic. It's so, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, um, sidetrack, side just explain who the general authorities are. And, but that's the thing is this is a deep exploration into the culture of post-Mormonism, yeah. what it's like to be a Mormon and what all these things mean. 
Um, yeah, leave questions below because yeah. we're gonna be. Yeah, please do. Up. Please do leave your questions below. We can go back and read about any of these things. Mm -hmm. Be like on page five, he says this. What does this word mean? Yeah, um, yeah we'll be recording this on and off yeah. and, and we going through it. And we won't even realize when we say the words that are are common in sometimes. Mormon language. Sometimes, sometimes I'm very good. I'm yeah. very good at knowing. <laughs> but uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, General Authority, Marlon K. Jensen. General Authorities always have their, have a, uh, middle, middle initial, uh -huh. and so, um, modern ones, and so, one of the very enjoyable, um, really subtle, not subtle, but, like, they can't, there's no response to it, is to just drop it, right? Just mm -hmm. drop it, is, uh... Just be like Marlon Jensen, like when you quote them, just say Marlon Jensen. Because what are they going to say? It's like, it's Marlon K. Jensen. It's like, what? What are you talking about? There's no other Marlon Jensen. What are we, you guys are so weird, right? The, the counter to it is so um, pedantic and childish that no one ever does it. And so it's just really fun to just, it's like a cheap shot. And it's just, it's pretty delicious every time. Same with the handshake, right? Is a cheap shot. Oh, no, 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 no. That one's really uncomfortable. No, 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 no. The handshake is something very different. Okay. It's, it's like fingering your butt. Oh, no. Right? Like, it happened to me once on the mission. I shook someone's hand, and they gave me a handshake. I recoiled, and I was confused. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know how to respond. I didn't know who to tell. <laughs> that's right. Bad touch! <laughs> yeah. No, that's, that's not fun. That's not enjoyable. These ones are generally enjoyable, and so uh, we should remind ourselves not to... Uh, partake too much of the most delicious of candies because we will be glut gluttony is mm -hmm. yeah whatever let's you know yeah, get, yeah. It, it's distracting it just is. like talking about misspellings yeah. is distracting so uh, yeah but it's uh, it is a lot of fun to just be like Elder Marlon Jensen and they go wait up oh, that sounds so weird <laughs> they hate it he was asked uh, his thoughts regarding the effects of Google on membership <laughs> Uh, and people who are leaving in droves over church history. And so that's the interesting thing. Even before this, yeah. even before this was written, the idea that people were leaving in droves mm -hmm. was present yeah. in the inside the church. And then this fucking made people start leaving in droves. So mm -hmm. it feels like the... Um, the movement out of the church is is escalating, yeah. but every general authority will deny that. Uh -huh. They will say that they are growing, of course, in the way that they want to. The right, and this is yeah. one of the very but embarrassing yeah. ideas. Is uh, uh, how many times must you see your leaders lie to you mm -hmm. before you cannot trust them? Yeah. Right, yeah. before you must check everything they say. Mm -hmm. How many times is it? Is it ten? Is it every day? Like what? Because I don't know, and that's the that's the point. Is it's one against twenty five, and it eventually the the shelf breaks. I'm yeah. sorry, you can't, you can't. Elder Jensen's response: <laughs> Maybe since Kirtland, we've never had a period of I call it apostasy, like we're having now, largely over these issues. So in Kirtland, which we'll talk about later. Oh. There was a there was a banking scandal, and so it was huge. The apostasy. I don't know if it was half or like a third of the members, because it was a very small membership at the time. Oh, of course, and right. so the people, everyone knew that it was like, wait, the prophet fucking made a fraudulent bank, and then it went bust in less than a year. That is, the prophet did that. <laughs> like it's just really hard to yeah. sort of yeah. yeah. And so it's cringy. and so it's funny because it's 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 still Kirtland. That's the point. Is no, that's still one of our. That's mm -hmm. on here. The problems with the bank in Kirtland are in this list. Mm -hmm. You can't. Problem. It's it's, it's been buried. right. Saying maybe since Kirtland we haven't had a period of. This is the same period of apostasy. This is the same Kirtland. Kirtland is the problem. It's just uh, it's just snowballed. Mm -hmm. This truly shocked me. I didn't understand what was going on or why people would leave over history. I started doing research and reading books like LDS historian and scholar Richard Bushman's Joseph Smith Rough, Sto Ro Rough Stone Rolling and many others to try to be better understanding, to try to better understand what happened. And so uh, we disaffected members of the church have been writing about our disaffection over and over and over. And these... Uh, these and we're painted as the worst devils. Every... Uh 
Well, yeah, but but what I mean is 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 this apostasy has has since it's been happening yeah. over six generations. I'm sixth generation Mormon. Mm -hmm. Since these each of these generations have hit it, they've produced um, um, uh, these the CES yeah. letters. Yeah. One of them is this Joseph Smith's uh, Rough Stone Rolling by Bushman. Another one is, or maybe not. Maybe this guy is uh, believing. There's another one by Fon Fon Brody in the early uh, 20th century. Uh, uh, about and it's called No Man Knows My History and that a lot of people uh, that triggers a lot of people mm -hmm. like this one does and so there's many 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 of these this one is the most modern of, of these yeah. and yeah, uh, yeah. <clears throat> the following issues are among my main concerns <laughs> and then here we have the uh, yeah here we go <laughs> so oh, okay. this is quite quite a bit uh, of them so, let's start with uh, the Book of Mormon. Nice. So that's cool. Let's see what he says about it. Yeah. Book of Mormon is a keystone no, of wait, our... Wait, wait, wait. Before you start, we got to stretch and take a break. Let's take a break. All right. Yeah. See you I soon. So let's stop yeah. recording. Let's stop recording just so... That